Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, closed knuckle knuckles today. <clears throat> now this knuckle is off Chuck's uh, 63 CJ5. This is the later edition knuckle. It's got the uh, gusseted arm here. Early ones didn't have that. And there's your knuckle. You got your kingpins top and bottom. You got your spindle. And then your backing plate goes on there. Now I'm just showing you the knuckle now. Everything's easier to see. <clears throat> this joint right here, the, um, the spindle has a shoulder on it. And that supports it. The bolts don't support it. The shoulder does. The bolts that go in here are just a clamp type bolt. It just, just to squeeze it together, the locating, and the weight is taken on the shoulder. This area can be quite troublesome. Uh, for some people <clears throat> it is very easy to rip everything from this point out and it'll come right off the hub this is a 3 8 24 fine thread bolt from the factory it was a grade 5 uh, when I do these I upgrade to a grade 8 uh, it, if you want to go from an engineering standpoint um, thread engagement for a 3 8 bolt or, or basically you could use this as a as a rule for any bolt one and a half times the diameter should be your thread engagement anything after that you're kind of wasting threads anything less than that um, is not good now this area right here the thickness of this area depending where you measure it uh, is anywhere from 280 to 319 uh, well below the uh, the 9 16 of an inch that we would need for proper thread engagement there. That is just a rough casting inside. They didn't do any finish work in there after they cast it. They finished this surface, uh, gave a diameter there, finished your bearing surfaces, finished your spindle surfaces, and <clears throat> um, they used, like I say, 3824 fine thread grade 5 bolts in there. Uh, now if you take all the Jeep vehicles and, and all the miles they've driven, there's probably billions of miles on this type of setup without any trouble. Chuck indicated to me in an email at one point that he was going to take his Jeep on, on uh, you know, through some trails and stuff. and, and not, not hardcore four-wheeling, but just a little bit of trail riding. <clears throat> um, if it's ever happened to you, and I've seen it happen to a lot of guys, uh, it could take a bump on a rock, uh, a hit on a log, something like that. And when this finally decides to separate from this, you've got real problems on the trail. Uh, now, it's not critical. You don't need to do this on every one. Um, I've got a lot of vehicles with just, with just that spindle bolted right on there, and I don't have any trouble with it. Uh, I use good bolts. I use a, a sealer. I don't worry about the bolts loosening up. Uh, when I know a vehicle is going to do a little bit of off-roading, I do an upgrade to this knuckle. Uh, which I'm going to do on Chuck's knuckle, and I'm going to show you three different ways to do it. Um, it doesn't have to be hard, but I'll show you a few different ways that I've tried in the past. And uh, <clears throat> it's a good upgrade. If you could do any, like, harder four-wheeling, uh, most guys are going to switch over to a 30 or a 44 open knuckle design. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, it's a complete different setup on that. Um, but for right now, I'm going to show you guys how to upgrade your knuckle. Uh, and it won't be too much trouble. And there'll be no chance of this ever separating again uh, on a trail. So hang in there with me. We'll go over to the first setup. Okay, here's the inside of the knuckle. And you can see the threaded area. Again, it's just raw casting. It's not flat. Um, there's no sense in putting a stud in here because you still only have, um, you know, about three hundred thousandths of thread engagement. So we need to make room in here for uh, the bolt that I'm going to use. So that needs to be machined. These need to be flat and a couple different ways to do that. So let's check out number one way of doing that. Okay, here's the first way. You take your spindle 
surface tight up against your jaws and you'll need a special set of jaws here just to bite that and you're going to take your boring bar and send that guy in there and you are going to make a cut and flatten everything out and give plenty of room and if you do it this way there's a whole entire groove cut you have to be careful right here you don't cut through I've seen a lot of guys go through that to get you know really uh, cutting and next thing you know they ruin their whole knuckle um, I've done it in the past like this knuckles have gone through a couple different changes some are thicker than others some are thinner than others uh, you gotta look at it and you just you've probably had to see a, a whole bunch of knuckles to know which ones you can machine like this and you can't um, this takes a little bit of a setup but it does work and it's one way to do it okay here's setup number two that's my rotary table I have a pilot there it just fits in there perfectly and I can always center the um, the rotary table easily and then that locates our knuckle and then I clamp it down and then remove this guy I don't have this on the mill right now so just kinda you gotta realize what I'm doing here and then I take it over to the mill and uh, I offset it properly and then I just go down with a long end mill and make my flat surface and room for the head of the bolt and if I have a bunch to do that's a pretty quick way to do it on the mill so the, mill, the, the end mill will just go down and cut little guys in there. Uh, I think I have a, a knuckle like that. Let me grab that and I'll show you what I mean. Okay guys, here's a knuckle that you can see. I set it up on a rotary table. I ran and flattened all these guys out in a circular pattern. And then I cut enough of a recess in there to fit our bolt. So on the mill with a rotary table is a good way to go it works fine and like I say if you got a bunch to do it's, it's easy to do uh, the third way is all by hand and I'm going to show you that now on Chuck's knuckle and uh, something you could easily do at home and uh, I'll show you what I got going on okay guys here's my cutter um, standard counter bore cutter and it has a um, removable pilot and so you could get different size pilots based on um, the thread that you want to get that through now this is uh, perfectly sized for that hole right there you can get these at any uh, machine shop supply house any industrial house anything like that uh, you just get the right diameter you need for your uh, bolt head we're gonna go over to bolts next um, chuck this guy in the drill and go down in there <clears throat> now your holes these two side ones are easy because they got the most clearance um, your, your ones that are near the kingpins you got to go nice and easy because you got to take a big chunk of material out of there uh, here is another knuckle I did this one's still dirty but you can see the flat area and I don't know if you can see it but where, where the kingpin is uh, you got to take some of this area out in here so you got to go nice and slow with the drill but it is a, a hand operation uh, you could do it in your garage um, it's not a big deal so we'll get that chucked up in a drill we'll put the drill on on a low speed the pilot is going to come through your um, your hole there, so you got to put it on a, on a piece of wood or something, so you can so you can get through there. I don't know if I can get you set up here. Um, maybe if I put it in the vise sideways, I can show you better. Uh, I, I normally do it flat on the bench, but let me let me try and get set up in the vise so you can see how it goes. Okay, guys, I'm having a hard time setting this up so you can see it, but. I'm going to go after this hole right here. 
I'm going to try and stay out of the way of the camera. We're just going to pilot that in there. And you can see it's cut, wants to cut on the side first. Takes a little bit of... Nice and slow, nice and slow. See that all right? Camera's a little messed up. We're starting to get a flat on that. We got to go a little more until we get good bearing surface for our bolt head. So I got to go just a hair more down in there, and then we'll just kind of do the rest of them. And uh, it's just a process. It's uh, you know it's kind of a pain. Uh, if you have a mill, you could do this on the mill, and it works real good on the mill. But I'm just trying to show you guys so you can do it, you know, at your at your house or or wherever you know uh, in your garage uh, it, if you have a mill put this in your mill and do it. it's much easier uh, but we're just gonna get through this one by hand okay guys after a little bit of horsing that tool around you could see the nice cuts we got and next thing we're gonna do <clears throat> is run a tap 3 8 24 tap through all those guys clean them down with acetone get them squeaky squeaky clean because we are gonna lock tight our bolts in there um, critical setup it has to be clean so we'll run a tap through we'll clean it I'll be back and show you the bolt uh, that I selected to go in there okay guys here's the bolts I like to use in here uh, it's a button uh, socket cap screw and they're gonna go in there and act as studs and I put them in there with the red Loctite 271 he's taking a little bit of Loctite down where it's gonna seal Okay, we're just going to run those guys in there. I'll actually send them down a little faster with this gun here. Okay, now that's going to be our stud. Oh, I think you can see that. And then you got that low profile head in there. Okay, so we're just going to get all those in there. Again, uh, lock tight them so that when you're putting your um, when you're putting your spindle on there, they don't start backing in there. You need them lock tighted in there. And there we go. Hey, in there, bit came out. We're just gonna send those guys in. Okay guys, they're all Loctited in there. Uh, I took those down to uh, 40 foot-pounds. Uh, they're seated in there perfectly on the flats that we cut. It's the lowest profile um, setup that I could get. You could get uh, like half height socket head cap screws. Uh, there's other button head screws, but make sure uh, they're plenty strong. Make sure they're, uh, they're not just a junk bolt. Um, now, if you were going to lose your spindle or anything, you'd have to pull every one of those heads through that knuckle. Knuckle be destroyed. So, if you get everything done right, your spindle should fit right on there. Uh, there shouldn't be any trouble with that. Again, you've got your spindle, you've got your brake backing plate. Um, and I use a lock nut on here, so you got to make sure your studs are the right length, depending on what kind of hardware you're going to use. If you're going to use a lock nut and a regular nut, if you're going to use a nylock nut, if you're going to use 
some type of metal locking uh, it just depends what you want to use size your bolts correctly and that is one indestructible knuckle and it doesn't take much to do and now um, you know Chuck's on the other side of the country there he's uh, 3,000 miles away so uh, when he's out on the trail I don't ever have to worry about a failure at this particular point this is something I'm not sure how it got out of the factory like this uh, it, it was a it was a problem from the very first ones they never addressed it and this is the best way I know to address it Chuck has spicer axles which fit perfect in there that Zeppa axle will fit fine only one that might give you a little trouble is the Bendix you may have to just tickle that with a grinder uh, if your Bendix axle is hitting those uh, I don't put Bendix axles in anything uh, uh, you know I only I try and only use Spicer because that's really the strongest and the best one and this is no problem for a Spicer uh, axle so that's all I have for you today thanks for watching uh, I hope this helps people out that are thinking of ways to improve their knuckle strength and uh, I will catch you guys on the next video